Hello students, myself Janil. Let us discuss third video of permeability and seepage. So, in previous two videos, we have discussed different definitions, basic terms, as well as Darcy's law, its limitations, its assumptions, etc., as well as laboratory tests, as well as horizontal and vertical permeability. Now, let us move forward towards Laplace equation for 2D flow. So let us understand assumptions first and then we will go to Laplace equation. Assumptions. First assumption that is Darcy's law should be valid. So Darcy's law should be valid. So you have to see the previous video and understand Darcy's law. Soil should be or soil is assumed as saturated, homogeneous, incompressible and isotropic. Now. Let us understand them all. Saturated, that is okay, you know saturation. Homogeneous. Homogeneous means soil is made up of same type of soil particles. Like if it is a sand, every particle should be of sand. And as it is assumed as homogeneous, every particle in the soil should be of same material. Incompressible. It should not be compressible. It is assumed as incompressible. We know that everything is compressible at some different different extent, but it is assumed as it is not compressible. And isotropic. Isotropic simply means that it is having elastic properties in every direction which is same. Then and then we can say it is isotropic. Water should be incompressible. So water is also assumed as incompressible. And the flow should be 2D. Two dimensional flow should be here and it should be a steady flow. Steady flow means with minimal disturbance. Let us move forward toward Laplace equation. Consider an element of soil of size dx, dz and of unit thickness. In this image you can see x and z axis and y axis is assumed as one unit. And the element you can see is having size dx as well as dz. And in y axis it is having unit size. So it is assumed as 2D element. And we are talking about 2D flow. Right. So dx and dz are dimensions of this element. Now element is having inlet and outlet. Inlet from left side that is vx. Horizontal inlet. And at Outside Vx plus del Vx by del x into dx is the outlet because somewhat will be added when it will go out. Same way in another direction that is Vz plus and Vz and Vz plus del Vz by del Z into dz. So this is how you can understand inlet and outlet. Now let us write them with equations. Velocity in x direction. If we talk about velocity, then inlet that is Vx and outlet of the same direction will be Vx plus del Vx by del x into dx. And in the z direction, we can write Vz and Vz plus del Vz by del z into dz. Moving further, here in this case, we can say that Q which is entering the element should be Q leaving the element as we have assumed the element as according to assumptions. Now, for Q, we can multiply V into area. Now, if we multiply inlet is equal to outlet, so Vx into area. Now, if we talk about this Vx, then area which is going inside, that is dz into 1. So, Vx into dz into 1. Same way, on another side, Vx plus del Vx upon del x into dx into del z, Vz into 1. Same way, for another direction, Vz into its area, dx into 1. Same way, Vz plus del Vz upon del z into dz into its area, dx into 1. Now, solving these, we can find out del Vx by del x into dx into dz 
plus del dz by del z into dx into dz is equal to 0. Taking out common s dx into dz, we can get del vx by del x plus del dz by del z is equal to 0. And we can say that del vx by del x plus del z by del z must be 0. And this equation is giving us continuity equation for 2D flow by Laplace. Moving further, if Darcy's law is valid, then we can say V is equal to K into I. In X direction, Vx can be written as Kx into Ix. Now, Ix can be written as del H by del X and it is negative. Here, I is what? Hydraulic gradient. Same way, Vz can also be written as Kz into minus del H by del Z. The minus sign here indicates that the head decreases in the direction of flow. So, minus Kx del square H by del X square minus Kz del square H by del Z square is equal to 0. Here, from this we can write out if Kx is equal to Kz as permeability in x direction is same as in z direction we can write del square h by del x square plus del square h by del z square is equal to 0 and this equation will give Laplace equation in terms of h that is head moving further if we want to write it in the terms of velocity potential function phi it will be minus k into h phi right now if I do del phi by del x, that it will be minus k del h by del x, that is vx, right? And if I do del phi by del z, minus k del h by del z is vz, right? So, we must write del square phi by del x square plus del square phi by del z square is equal to 0. And this equation is Laplace equation for 2D flow in terms of velocity potential function. That's it in Laplace equation. Let us move forward to flow net. So, flow net is a graphical representation of flow lines and equipotential lines. So, we can understand it through figure. It is a graphical representation of direction of seepage and head at every point. In simple words. Now, let us understand what is flow line, what is equipotential line. Now, you can see the vertical lines which are curved like this are equipotential lines. Each line is having same potential of flow. And these horizontal type of lines are flow lines. They are showing seepage. Now, in that, in between that, there is a square built up that is known as field. You can see these different fields. Now, if we compare two equipotential, three equipotential lines, so the gap between every two equipotential lines will be delta H, delta H, delta H. And gap between every two flow lines will be delta Q, delta Q, same delta Q. And this is known as flow path also. Moving forward to this, the head loss caused by water crossing two adjacent equipotential lines is termed as potential drop. For example, we can say flow under the dam. Here you can see this. Here you can see uh, water level of the dam. Height H2, height H1. There is, there is H1 upstream side, downstream side we can say. Now this is flow net of the dam. Here flow lines are going like this. Seepage is going like this. And equipotential lines are going like this. So, in the dam cases, in these type of cases, it will be very much useful. Moving forward to characteristics of a flow net. What are the characteristics of it? Lines at right angles. When the lines meet, they will meet at right angles only. Either they are curved or they are straight. They will meet at right angles only. Fields are square. That we have seen in the figure. Delta Q is same. Delta H is same. We have understood that. Dimensions of the field. If they are smaller. Velocity will be higher. And hydraulic gradient will be higher. So these are different characteristics of a flow net. 
let us understand applications of flow rate so first application is determination of seepage so to determine seepage we can do like this the discharge through one flow channel can be assumed as delta q is equal to k into i into a according to Darcy's law where a is width of the field b is length of the field t, t is thickness which is one unit h there is total head loss and nd there is number of equipotential drops these all terms will be useful here now in the terms of flow net if i mold the Darcy's law we can write i is equal to delta h by b head loss by the length or there is here b a area area can be written as area of field right as we are talking about one channel only right now so a into 1 it is 2d so we have to take another direction as 1 so area will be a into 1 but fields are always square so a will be same as b so a and b can be cancelled out we can write delta q is equal to k into delta h and we can also write delta q is equal to k into capital H upon nd because delta h is one gap right one head gap but if we see whole figure we can write down total edge total head upon nd number of equipotential drops so it will be the same now this is for one channel only if we further investigate for complete flow net for complete flow net q will be written as k into h by nd into nf where nf is number of flow channels nf by nd is defined as shape vector here we can also write q is equal to k into nf by nd that is shape vector and this equation will provide seepage to from flow net second application for that that is determination of seepage pressure we can also measure seepage pressure from this ps can be written as h into gamma w and here h can be written as as it is a potential drop we can write total h h minus n into delta h into gamma w so this will provide seepage pressure and it will act always in the direction of flow the third application for flow net from flow net that is if we find out uplift pressure we can let us see u is equal to h w into gamma w we know that there is pore water pressure here h w should be taken as piezometric head now piezometric head means here h minus z where h is hydraulic head and z is datum head as we know it previously so fourth application will be determination of exit gradient so we can measure exit gradient and from exit gradient and critical gradient we can see if the failure is in the nearby future or not let us see that the maximum hydraulic gradient at downstream end of flow lines is called exit gradient now ie exit gradient can be written as delta h by l now delta h is what potential drop as we have discussed that l average length of last field in the flow net because we are talking about exit so these are different applications of flow net that's it for this lecture. Thank you.